In this video, we will see how to configure the Unity engine to export an Android application ready for upload to Google Play. This is something you should try at first. If you are interested in making an Android application, you should try with an empty project or the project you are working on. Try to compile it this way to make sure you have all the tools in order. By default, when you come here, File, Build Settings, if you have the Android engine selected, here you can create an APK version that can be installed in an Android smartphone with the option of unknown sources enabled, and it works. But when you try to upload that version to Google Play, you'll have a problem. Google Play asks publishers to upload both a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version of an application. Once I configure everything to export the 64-bit version, a quite serious technical issue appeared, similar to what we're seeing here. There were four error messages. Basically, the error was that this tool, IL2CPP.x, did not run properly and did not let me compile the 64 bits version. So, first, I'm going to show you everything that needs to be configured to be able to export a 64 bits version. That we're going to do now. And the time you are seeing on the screen is the time when I'm going to start explaining how, in particular, I was able to fix this horrible error. Let's start with the engine version. I have two versions in Unity Hub. This one was installed using Unity Hub and this one was installed by Torrent. The best would be to install from Unity Hub. Here with the add button, choose the last official release, next and add the Android tools. These tools can also be added this way, with this option, add module. Android build support is what allows you to make the switch platform and then the SDK, NDK and JDK tools are needed to build the APK file. Make sure that your project version contains all the tools. In Edit, Preferences, External Tools, if you have installed the Android tools using the Unity Hub, make sure all these boxes are checked. If you cannot download these tools from the Unity Hub, you will have to download them manually, uncheck these boxes and enter the corresponding installation path. Then go to Project Settings from Edit, Project Settings or from File, Build Settings. Here we must also switch to the Android platform. So with this button, you can access directly to the player window within the project settings. Here, go to other settings and activate this option, ARM 64 bits. The problem is that it's currently disabled. Change the scripting backend from mono to IL2CPP and now we can activate ARM 64 bits. Then in build settings, check this box, build app bundle, which is a standard format for uploading applications to Google Play. Instead of an APK file, an ABB file will be generated which contain both versions and you will be able to upload that file to Google Play. This is the moment when the IL2 CPP error appeared and the compilation was cancelled. But here as we see it ended well and the ABB file was generated. If you have this result, excellent, you don't have to worry, at least not to compile a 32 and 64 bits version. You can upload that file to Google Play, uh, but you probably need to sign it first. Here in publishing settings, create a key or something, but you can search that. How to sign an Android application. Now let's see how I solved the error IL2CPP.x did not run properly. It's something that particularly worked for me, I hope it works for you too. In several forums, it was suggested to change the version of the NDK, the one you installed from Unity Hub, change it to the version R16V. But when I installed this version, Unity didn't accept it. It said it was an invalid version of the NDK. Then I came across this page of Unity documentation, Android environment setup. I will leave all the links in the description. Here, at the end, there is a table with the compatibilities of the Unity version with the NDK version. And here is where I realized that the NDK R16B was not compatible with Unity 2019.3 version. So I thought to download this one, 2019.2. Of course, here in Unity Hub, you cannot do it. Here only appear the latest official versions. But if you come to the Unity Downloads file, clicking here or searching it in Google, you will access to this page where are all the versions of Unity. Here I found the 2019.2 version, download the torrent file, inside the torrent select the engine and the Android package and install both files. Then in Unity Hub, go to Installs, Locate, then search for the path where that version of the editor was installed, select unity.exe, and now that version is going to appear here in Unity Hub. We cannot add the Android modules to it, but we can install the modules for another version and they will work in this version as well. So now we can create a new project with that version or change the version of your project. There's no backward compatibility, so you will surely have troubles, but nothing that cannot be solved. 
Once you have the 2019.2 engine, you need the NDK R16B. In Google, write download NDK. Enter this page where you can download the latest version. But here is also an option that says unsupported NDK downloads. Go there, accept the conditions, look for the R16B version. In my case, I downloaded the 64 bits version and extract the zip file in program files, Unity. Then in Unity 2019.2, go to Edit, Preferences, External Tools, uncheck the Android NDK box and give it the path where you extracted the NDK R16B package, here. Then we do everything we did at the beginning of the video. Change from Mono to IL2CPP, check ARM64, go to File, Field Settings, Build App Bundle, press Field, and doing all this, it worked for me. The error didn't appear again and the compilation was successfully completed. To my surprise, I opened the other project with the latest version, tried compiling the application for 32 and 64 bits and it worked. Strangely enough, the problem was solved in the current version as well, which is fantastic, but I have no idea why. So that's the way the problem was solved for me. I hope it works for you too. See you next time.